our destination? Joe Suzette, the route, Liz. Yes, Captain. Oh, yes. Uh, we are in this position? Four minutes ago we were. We're across the Mid-Atlantic Range and headed for the Plato Seamounts now. May we? And after we explore that area, we will go here to the Atlanta Seamounts, no? That's right. Getting anxious, Suzette? All hands, stations. Stand by to dive. <laughs> Take her to 400 feet, Helm. 400 feet. Aye, aye, sir. Captain Fathom and the crew of the Argonaut are often what they believe to be a routine scientific exploration. At this point, they can little imagine the strange series of events which are about to follow. Attention to mission briefing. Professor Jones? Thank you, Captain. Our mission is to find evidence in the evolutionary migration of sea life from the time fish crawled out of the sea to take over the Earth as land animals. I'll show you some slides in our closed circuit television system. Suzette, please. Valuable treasures in the form of fossils, shells, and skeletons have been found in the sedimentary rock layers of the earth on dry land. The deserts and prairies of our own United States were covered by oceans thousands of years ago. This specimen was uncovered in such a rock slab. This skeleton of a fish is 14 feet long. We call it a Porpheus. It is 90 million years old. Oh, me. Although this species disappeared from the Earth long ago, this fish... What was that? Oh, oh, my goodness. What gives, Ronnie? Problems? Not the controls, sir. They're working okay. Scotty? Animals gauges and all. It's just a novel, Skipper. Engine room. Anything down there, Pete? No, sir. No trouble showing. Did you were maybe, Captain? Oh, that was severe turbulence. Almost like a shock wave. An earthquake? Yes, could be. Oh, boy. I got that old feeling trouble's coming. Well, we'll keep on with the briefing, but I want everyone back at a station. If you can't see, at least listen. Go ahead, Wilbur. <clears throat> this next specimen is the giant trilobite isotelus. Only 18 inches long, but still a giant for its species. It ruled the seas for 100 million years. It was the first of the arthropods, the joint-legged animals. Later came the vertebrate with backbone. Ah, now this is an interesting one. About 280 million years ago, fish began crawling out of the ocean to colonize the land. If Professor Jones knew what was about to happen, he would not have been so calm as he continued his lecture. The first amphibians evolved from fish like this silicon. We thought this rascal had been extinct for 70 million years <laughs> until this one was caught off the coast of South Africa only 27 years ago. Today, we still find descendants of prehistoric amphibians, like the lungfish in our mangrove swamp. And... Oh, 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 what happened? We're like in a spin, Captain. Control, nothing happened. Secure station. Hang on. I'm getting dizzy. Oh, back. We're in a whirlpool. Captain Fathom and the crew of the Argonaut were over the Delmore Straits on a scientific expedition when they found themselves in the clutches of a giant whirlpool. Out of the turbulence. Oh, I'm still spinning, Skipper. Oh, man. I've never been glued to the seat before. What happened, Captain? Centrifugal force had us pinned down. Then we really were spinning. Was it some kind of a whirlpool, Captain? Yeah. We're still moving, but we're out of it anyway. Out of the frying pan, maybe, but into the fire, I'll wager. It's pitch black out there, and we're awful deep. How deep? 
Depth gauge reads 2,473 feet, sir. Holding steady. Speed? Five knots. Course steady to within four degrees of drift. We seem to be in a river, Wilbur. A river, Captain? A river. But uh, I did not think a current deep under the ocean was powerful enough to carry away a submarine. Scientists haven't found out much about undersea currents yet. We may be doing some pioneering, like it or not. Lights on, sir. Hey. Holy sailing swordfish. Look, Skipper. Yeah. We're in a solid rock channel. There's not much room on either side, Captain. Keep her straight down the middle, Helm. Aye, aye, sir. Change. Perhaps we've been carried into a subterranean cavern in the face of a sea mount or a geo. Let's have a look. Stand by the surface. Take her up easy. Dead end, Captain. It's magnificent. More than that. We're underground. Where's that daylight coming from? Start your engine, Scotty. I'm going topside. Take us over to the ledge. It's a narrow passage, but there's room for a man to slip through. Anchor here, Scotty. We're going to find out what's on the other side of the wall. As the Argonauts crew emerged to the side of the mountain, they could not have been more surprised at what they saw. Would you look at that? Absolutely astounding. It is a whole underground world. These soil and rock formations have been shaping up in this chamber for thousands of years. The Argonauts' depthometer showed us at least 2,000 feet down. How do you figure daylight coming through the ceiling, Professor? It could be lava chutes in a volcano base or earthquake crevices. Mm. All right, everyone stay together so we can have a look around. Wait, Professor. It is not safe to go off alone. Hold it, Wilbur. That's far enough. I'll be a son of a sea turtle. Hmm? What is it, Wilbur? It's a, a, a sea dragon. Don't move. I'll blast it before it can... Never mind, Scotty. Hold your fire. Beautiful. Magnificent. Ah, that's what a bunch of all bones. Don't knock him, Scotty. He just likes his line of work. Never mind, Professor. How do you classify this specimen? It's a tiny zoomer. No doubt about it. 25 feet long, the terror of the sea during the Cretaceous period. I don't blame you for being excited, Wilbur, but don't go running off again, huh? But, Captain, this creature existed 63 million years ago. So it'll probably still be here after we take a look around, right? It's not the age that's so unusual, Captain. Oh? What then? This skeleton is no more than three months old. What? Three months? You mean other monsters like that one could be rolling around out here? Quite likely. Captain, we've accidentally arrived at the perfect spot for the objective of this expedition. I can't argue with that, Wilbur. So what's your pleasure? Begin collecting specimens. Take phonographs. Start cattle up. What am I seeing? Can I even my... Am I seeing things? Crime any jeepers. I don't believe it. You'd better believe it. That is a caveman. All of you. Don't make any sudden movements. It, it's incredible. Beyond my wildest dreams, a living prehistoric homo sapiens. Hmm. He's too advanced for the Neanderthal. Early Cro-Magnonite. Forget it. Wilbur, take a look at what your caveman is holding. Very interesting. That's a water bag made from an animal skin. Give me your canteen, Wilbur. Huh? Oh, uh, yes. My canteen. He was probably on his way to get water. Let's find out. Here, drink this water. <laughs> well, I'll be. Look, Wilbur. He seems to understand. <laughs> he does indeed. Now offer him your cup. Easy. Move slowly. Easy. That's it. Here. Have a swing, old fellow. Water. Water. Would you look at him? I never would have believed it. There's probably no water in this chamber. That's why he has to use the passageway through the wall to get out to where we left the Argonaut. But, Captain, that's salt water. Look, Captain, he seems to want us to follow him. <laughs> what the heck is it? 
Don't scorn it, lad. It's not a bad show mechanical aptitude, considering. Considering that he is only a brute, eh? Is that what you think? Well, I'll tell you. This man is no brute. You were right about the salt water, Captain. Crude as it is, this is a distillation plant. A stone wheel, water trough, steam, which in turn becomes distilled water, and the salt is left in the bottom. Oh, no! Oh! His neighbors, they're looking us over. I hope they like what they see. One thing still puzzles me, Wilbur. What, Captain? The prehistoric skeleton we found was an animal that lived on Earth before man. But the skeleton is fresh enough to indicate that the animals are still roaming around here. The ancestors of these present inhabitants are the survivors of a tribe of people who lived in a civilization that sank into this pit during an upheaval thousands of years ago. Would you look at that shameless woman? Oh, they're flirting with the big guy. You are a handsome fellow, monsieur. Well, scientifically speaking. <laughs> but uh, how could you know? You can see me, but not yourself. However... <laughs> I don't know about flirting, Scotty, but Suzette is doing all right with communicating. She is that. Look, she gave him a mirror. <laughs> a mirror. That's the first time he's had a look at himself. <laughs> yeah, but he's running away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Must have scared himself. <laughs> well, let's get on with the safari, shall we? The next move is yours, Wilbur. I'd like to get my specimens back aboard the Argonaut, Captain. Okay, Scotty can go with you. Ronnie and I'll go on ahead and see what we can find. Meet you back here in 30 minutes. I will wait here. Perhaps our friend will come back. That'll be nice, Suzette. Strange. Who would think it? The prehistoric age preserved here like a living museum. <laughs> Suzette, the bird thing's got her. I'll blast it. No, you can't shoot. She'd never survive the drop. Fathom, along with Professor Wilbur Jones and the crew of the Argonaut, are over the Delmore Straits on a scientific expedition, both strange and unusual for the intrepid captain. Their assignment is to search out proof of prehistoric life. The crew is briefed on some of the better known species of now non-existent life, the Portheus a fish some 14 feet long that inhabited these very waters some 90 million years ago. The trilobite Isotelis, though only 18 inches long, was still considered a giant for its species. It ruled the seas for 100 million years. Predecessor to the first amphibians was the coelacan, who was believed extinct for 250 million years. Imagine the scientist's amazement when one was found alive off the coast of South Africa only 27 years ago. Suddenly, the lecture was interrupted by a violent shaking of the Argonaut, which dazed the crew and threw the submarine into a fierce whirlpool. By the time Captain Fathom could regain control, he found the Argonaut had emerged into a strange underground cavern, illuminated by the eerie glow of an unexplained filtered light. When the crew ventured to explore farther, they were amazed to find themselves surrounded by the intricate beauty of the prehistoric past. As the ever-inquisitive Wilbur was examining the bones of a Tylosaurus, the group was joined by an unexpected visitor. As the crew surveys the world of this Cro-Magnon inhabitant, Suzette is unaware that a giant Pteranodon eyes her menacingly from above. By the time Scotty could rush to her aid, it was too late, for Suzette had already been swept away by the giant flying reptile. It's landing up on the cliff. Yeah, give me your rifle, quick. Good. It's dropped Suzette somewhere up there. Your target is awful far away. Uh, near miss will do. Got to get that bird away from her. Ow. You did it, Captain. The bird took off. Skipper, we heard the screeching. What are you shooting at? Where is Suzette? That turnadon carried her off. To the top of that cliff. We've got to get up there before it comes back. Poor Suzette. Here's your chance to communicate, Wilbur. Tell them we need a guide to the top of that cliff. I'll need your cooperation, everyone. Point upward. Okay, up there. Up Find there. a trail. Show us a path. Oh, where am I? What happened? This is a nest. Oh, that horrible bird creature. 
Oh! Hold it. Looks like this is as far as we go. Suzette! 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 Oh, Capitan! Here! Here I am over here! Look, across there. Hello, Suzette! Hello, Professor! We'll be right over to get you! Somehow. Oh, let's see. That's about 50 yards across. We can't just stand here, Captain. What are we going to do? The old trapeze act. Give me the harpoon gun, Scotty. Aye, Skipper. Good idea. Now hang on to the line when I fire. Aye. I got it. Ronnie, Scotty, be ready to catch us when we swing back. Yes, sir. Right, Captain. Here goes. You made it. Aye. That's half the job. Okay, Suzette. You're safe now. Ready when you are, Skipper. That's it. Hold tight. Whatever you say, Capitan. Suzette, you're safe. Oh, yes, Professor. Quite safe. Hey, did you feel that? Feel what? The whole cliff shook. They didn't land that hard. Yes, there it is again. Uh-oh, jumping. Gotta get back to the Argonauts. But, Captain, I have only a few specimens. Surely there's time to. Could be all the time in the world, Wilbur. If that crevice we came through to get in here gets blocked. Step on it if you want to make the Argonauts. The next earthquake could seal off this blooming exit. Come on. Okay. Well, let's get in there. Hey, Skipper, gang! I thought you'd never get here. Howdy, Pete. Stand by for boarding party. Be careful. Them quakes been shaking up the water. Him, too? Unless you want to leave without me. Gosh, no, Professor. There's always room for one more. Just hurry. I just want to reassure my guests. You don't know. Nothing to be afraid of. It's a boat. House like a cliff, only on the water. Uh-oh. There he goes. Through the crevice. Come on, old fellow. Don't leave now. Freeze, Wilbur. But he went back inside. Your primitive friend has a home back there. Maybe he'd rather stay. We've got to leave. Yes, that's it. He didn't want to leave his mirror. Oh. That's it, Wilbur. Get aboard. Now. Come back. We can't wait any more. You missed your calling, cowboy. Sorry, Professor. Take him below, Ronnie. Yes, sir. That's it. Let's go. But, Captain, we can't leave. That blocked passage means the cave people are cut off from their water supply. They'll all die of thirst. I'm sorry, Wilbur, but we don't have the manpower or the time to clear that passage. Captain, look! I think your friends will survive, Wilbur. Let's hope we can. See if we can't find that underseas river and get out of here. Captain, there's an indication of strong turbulence 50 feet below. That must be it. Take her down easy, Scotty. Fasten your seat belts and stand by. Right, sir. Ronnie, when we hit that current, I want directional stability. Roger, Captain. Here we go again. It's all yours, Ronnie. No response from planar helm control, sir. Don't fight it. Turn her toward the outside of the vortex. Hold her broadside, 90 degrees to the direction of the current. All right, all ahead full and hang on. Okay, Scotty. 
Blow your tanks and take her up. <laughs> I knew we could make it. I could feel it in my bones. <laughs> what did I say?